and welcome to a new video. Today's video is going to be a tutorial on how to make a pillbox hat. In a recent video I showed some of the steps for making these and you guys seemed eager for a full tutorial which is what I am making today. Pillbox hats are a really fun, relatively easy thing to make. I think it's because there's a large margin for error and they're also very simple to draft. So if you're looking to get into hat making I think they're a good place to start. My method for making hats involves heavyweight interfacing and wire so you don't need to have a hat block or any wet molding tools to accomplish this. However it does involve some sewing. The finished hat shown in this tutorial will be very durable and should last you for as long as you choose to wear it, unlike some that use cardboard or glue. As you can see, I am wearing a very large pillbox hat, which is the one I'm going to be showing in this tutorial, but these steps can be followed to make any size of pillbox hat, including one that is half the size, which would be four inches wide, or even a quarter of the size, which would be two inches wide. I've tried to make the process easy to understand, but if you have any questions by the time you reach the end of it, feel free to leave them down below. And on that note, let's get started. I really hope you enjoy. For this project, you'll need paper, a ruler, heavy felt weight interfacing, like the type that is used to make purses, or heavy buckram, a needle and thread, scissors, wire, I believe mine is 18 gauge, tin snips or wire cutters, pliers, binder clips, sewing pins, a marker, a veil comb, fluffy quilt batting, fabric for the exterior and lining for the interior, and I'm also using a sewing machine for this project, but you could get by without one. Having a sheet of cardboard can be helpful too, along with music or something to keep you entertained. I realize this is a pretty overwhelming list, but hopefully it'll seem less intimidating as I go through the process. Step one is making the pattern. I did this by folding a sheet of paper into quarters, then measuring outward from the folded corner to create a circular shape. The shape and size of the hat is up to you, but they are usually circles or slightly wider from side to side than front to back. I went with the latter, measuring 4.5 inches away from one corner and 4 inches away from the other, and continued to measure outward from the corner until I had many marks that I could connect. As a side note, my hat turned out larger than I wanted, so I wouldn't recommend following my measurements here. I was so determined to make it smaller than my green hat, and it turned out the exact same size, which is actually kind of impressive when you think about it. Go ahead and cut the pattern out. Here it is laid flat. You can leave it like this, but I chose to transfer it to cardboard so I would have an easier to trace and more durable template. At this point you could also cut out a band which will make up the crown and create a solid mock-up to ensure the hat is the size you want, but I decided not to do that. I went ahead and traced the shape onto interfacing, then cut it out. If you can't find this material, you can use buckram instead of interfacing, but I vastly prefer the interfacing since it's less prone to cracking and is much easier to work with. Now measure the circumference of the top of the hat. The crown is going to be a strip of interfacing and it needs to be an inch or two longer than this measurement. The width is up to you and how you want it to sit on your head, but keep in mind that your scalp is curved and the top of the hat is not, so a very narrow crown may limit its wearability. This is another reason to mock up can be a good idea. I made mine three and a quarter inches wide, and this was marked out with a sharpie and ruler before being cut out. Now for the wire. Start by cutting a length long enough to go around all the edges of the piece you're working on. Then use the pliers to create a flat loop at one end. For the crown, this loop should be placed in the middle at one end. Secure it in place with binder clips and use your fingers and pliers to form the wire into the corners. This project has a pretty large margin for error, so the wire can be placed between 1 8 and 3 8 of an inch away from the edge of the interfacing without it having any real effect. Continue clipping it and forming it to the edges of the piece. The wire is a crucial part of this process since it adds rigidity to the interfacing and creates a sturdy hat. It also allows you to bend it and form it to your head shape. The wire I'm using is for leveling picture frames, but some wire used in construction will work too. And if you make a smaller hat, you could probably get away with beading wire. Once you're near the end, make sure the ends of the wire overlap by at least an inch, then form another loop and trim off the excess. Overlapping the wire is important, otherwise the interfacing will have a weak point where the ends meet. Now I'm hand sewing the ends of the wire down using upholstery thread. This is a lot more durable than most thread, which makes it ideal for high tension areas that you have on hats. But you can get away with quadrupling up on normal thread if you can't find this stuff or don't want to buy it. I'm just sewing down the loops and ends of the wire by hand, making sure to go all the way through the interfacing with each stitch. This point is the most likely to pop up, which is why I'm using the heavier thread and doing it by hand. The rest of the wire will be sewn on by machine, but if you don't have a sewing machine, you can whip stitch it all in place by hand, it'll just take longer. 
If you are using a machine, test the settings on a scrap of interfacing first. I ultimately decided on a tension of 2, middle needle position, stitch width of 5, stitch length of 3, and a zigzag stitch. I tried a smaller stitch length first, but it was so tight that it almost perforated the interfacing, so definitely play around and see what works best. I'm really annoyed because I went to a bunch of effort to set up another camera with this elaborately braced broken tripod, all so you could see the sewing process without interrupting the other angle. Only for the memory card in said camera to fill up after 18 seconds without alerting me. So this is all the footage of that setup that I have. But here you can see me playing with the scraps. This isn't difficult to sew on, just be careful of the corners. And follow the wire with the center of the foot to avoid nicking it with the zigzag stitch. Here are my finished pieces. The wire isn't super even since, as I said, this project has a large margin for error, which I sort of took advantage of. Now we shall line the pieces. I picked a pink cotton for this. And I cut the lining to be at least an inch larger in every direction than the pieces they would be covering. You want the right side of the lining to be visible on the interior, which means pinning it so the wrong side is against the side of the interfacing with the wire sewn in. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. I'm basting this in place with really large whip stitches. The lining will be secured properly when we sew the pieces together and add the fashion fabric on top, but in the meantime these large stitches will keep it in place and you won't have to navigate the minefield of pins. Now wrap the crown around the top of the hat until the edges are flush against each other. Since we added an extra inch or two, there will probably be some overlap in the back. For me, this was around 3 quarters of an inch. Use binder clips to secure the ends together with the appropriate overlap in mind. Then hand stitch the pieces together so the rectangle now forms something that actually looks like the crown of a hat. And once again I'm using whip stitches with upholstery thread for this. Now form it into a better shape and pin the top of the hat on top. It's difficult to pin through the interfacing, so I'm actually pinning the lining layers together. Now start sewing these pieces together. You want to start at the back and work your way around. This way once you near the end, if the crown is too big or too small, you can ease the pieces together without it being visible from the front or side. With a more elaborate hat, the front, back, and side alignments would be carefully marked and matched with the crown and brim. But as I said, we have a large margin of error here. The only thing I would be aware of is that the overlapping part of the crown aligns with the ends of the wire on the top piece, so all the ugly bits are at the back. And I'm securing these with a medium sized whip stitch and heavy duty thread. Though the pins only went through the lining, these stitches are going through the inner facing too. If you are using buckram for this piece, be careful not to pull your stitches too tightly or it can crack. In that situation, you may want to bind the edges or secure the lining more thoroughly, then just sew the lining slash binding together instead of the buckram to help avoid this. I'm not sure if you can tell, but the crown ended up being a bit too big, so here I'm easing the pieces together until it sits smoothly, then tying off my thread. Now the base is done, but there's still work left to do. Most pillbox hats had a dome top created during the wet molding process, where ours has sharp corners where the edges meet. So bring on the quilt batting. I'm cutting a dozen or so circles of various sizes out of scraps of batting. The batting used should be the loosely woven fluffy type, not the type that feels dense, almost like fleece. You also need to cut out a narrow strip long enough to go around the perimeter of the hat, and a piece large enough to cover the top and hang down the sides. Stack some of the smaller circles in the center, then run a large strip around the edge and use larger circles to hold it in place. Another circle goes on top since you want the center to be the highest point, then drape the largest circle on top of that and over the sides. Now pull and pin the batting in place. Try to place the pins horizontally as low down as you can and smooth out any large creases. At this point the hat is ready to be covered. So it's time to cut out your top layer of fabric. For this you need to do some math, but it's easy math. The band going around the crown needs to be twice the width of the interfacing strip you cut out, plus 2 inches. To find the length, measure around the crown, since the batting may have changed this measurement, and add another 2 inches to this measurement. 1 inch for ease and 1 inch for seam allowance. Mark that onto your fabric and cut it out. If you are using a thin fashion fabric, I'd suggest backing it with a thicker material like fleece for this process. That advice applies to the next piece of fabric I cut out too, which will cover the top of the hat. 
Set the circle of fabric aside, then pin the fabric rectangle in half and sew the short ends together with a half inch seam allowance. Iron the seam open, then fold the material in half again, this time so the wrong sides are touching. Then pin around the top edge. By machine, or by hand if that's your preference, stitch a half inch away from the folded edge. On a separate note, I know I said earlier to leave an inch of ease, but that will vary depending on the size of your hat. For example, an inch of ease on a 4 inch wide hat might cause the band to slip off entirely, so adjust that to your project. This applies for the ease left when cutting the interfacing crown too. I said add an extra inch or two just to be safe, but if you are making a hat for a doll or something, that could be a large percentage of the total length and completely unnecessary. After completing the top stitching and trimming the threads, it's back to focusing on the circular piece. Lay this on top of the hat and pin it in place using vertical pins. You want the heads of the pins to be level with the top of the hat so they'll be visible once the band is on. Also remove the horizontal pins securing the batting as you go. This is very, very important. Try to ease the fabric over the curves so there aren't too many puckers or pleats. Also trim the batting that hangs really far down. This will help create a slightly tapered effect near the edge of the crown. But if you are using a thinner material, this might look more pronounced, like a ridge which is why backing it with something heavier can be a good idea. Also, I very impressively managed to be ever so slightly out of frame for this entire step. <laughs> now I'll pull the band over top of the hat. I clearly didn't leave enough ease here, but I did eventually get it on. When doing this, try to line up the back seam and the band with the back of the crown. Pull the band down until you like the positioning, and there is an even amount of seam allowance at the bottom. Then remove the vertical pins and pin the band to the other piece of fabric. Once again, smoothing out creases as you go. With matching thread, sew the pieces together. I did this with loose but carefully hidden whip stitches. The band should be tight enough that it stays in place on its own. This is just to prevent any slight shifting. The end is now in sight! If you are using wool or material that doesn't fray, you can tuck the ends inward and whip stitch them to the lining. However, my fabric frayed quite badly, so I'm tucking it inward twice to create a rolled hem that will be secured to the lining. An alternative to this would be sewing a ribbon into the edge of the hat, which is a very common practice. This is really challenging to show since I'm working inside of the hat. I actually didn't film me sewing this edge down since the footage would have been useless. But after finishing pinning, I stitched it in place with more whip stitches. And here you can see it finished. The final and optional step for this was sewing in a comb. I wanted it to sit pretty far back in my head and the interfacing slash wire combo can be hard to secure on with hat pins. So using four strands of thread, I whip stitched a veil comb into the front and I like to leave this a little loose since that makes it easier to position. For the sake of this video, I'm sewing the comb in, but since I have so many hats, I usually use a safety pin to secure them and switch the combs between hats. But that's far less glamorous, so let's pretend that I don't do that. You could go ahead and add a ribbon, bow, feathers, or a brooch to the exterior of this hat, but I'm leaving mine simple and calling it done. So that is the end of this video. I really hope I explained everything properly and that it was easy to understand. As I said in the beginning, if you're confused about anything, feel free to leave a comment with your question and I will try and get back to you. I'm also gonna put some extra information in the description box. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope this motivates you to make your own pillbox hat. They really are a very fun, relatively simple hat making project that only take a couple of hours, which means you can really have fun making them in a bunch of different colors and sizes. And as I said in the video, you could also dress this up with a brooch or a bow or a ribbon uh, feel free to go wild with it. I just like the traditional look of a simple pale box hat. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like and a comment. Those really help me out. And I shall talk to all of you guys very soon.